Midcoast Maine is prized for its pockets of peace and quiet, especially here on the St. George Peninsula. Andrew Wyeth immortalized this area in his paintings, and we can see what spoke to him. You get a pretty good view of everything that Maine is really all about. Just under 200 miles from Boston, St. George is home to several fishing villages. Part of what makes this region distinctive, says retired lobsterman Nat Lyon. The appeal of Maine is the rock-bound coast, is the little peninsulas like we are. Ninety percent of them are all fishing dependent. 2,600 people live full-time on the peninsula. Lyon says that number has likely grown since the pandemic. We've had quite an influx of people from away, as we gently call them. Lyon himself is from away. More than two decades ago, he moved here from Marblehead, Massachusetts. Today, he is director of the Marshall Point Lighthouse and Museum in Port Clyde, which dates back to the mid-1800s. We're short and we're a steady light. We're a white light 24-7. The only thing the Coast Guard takes care of now is the light itself and the foghorn. Everything else is managed by volunteers. In the 1980s, locals saved the light station from being sold. There was a rumor that it was going to become a hotel, and the town said, no way. So that established the Marshall Point Lighthouse and Museum Committee, which is a part of the St. George Historical Society, and we're all volunteers. Today, Marshall Point attracts 20,000 people annually. The museum displays a range of memorabilia about quarries, shipbuilding, and lobstering. Barbara Sorg is the museum's events coordinator. Each lobsterman has their own colors, and so they are registered with these colors. Over here, these are in memoriam. Visitors also pay their respects to this fisherman's memorial facing the shore. But they mostly come here for the views and the fresh, salty air. This is the farthest edge of the St. George Peninsula, and the sunset doesn't disappoint. Sometimes it's just nature at its best. Sometimes nature is best seen from above. So main streets and back roads, highways and byways, and every now and again, a biplane. Since 1974, the Owl's Head Transportation Museum has been showing, maintaining, and operating vintage planes and vehicles. Development and auto auction director, Toby Stinson. You'll see over 100 vintage aircraft and automobiles and technological achievements from the late 19th through mid 20th century. Most museums are, don't touch anything, don't use anything. This is different here. Yeah, this museum was founded on the principle that everything was going to work and go. Brad Carter is a veteran pilot. This is a 1933 Waco UBF-2. There were about 35 of them built. I think there's 16 or so still flying. Duck your head. Including this one, which visitors can reserve for a ride. It's 100 miles an hour out here. Inside, it's going to feel like you're in a bubble. You're not going to feel much wind at all. Turns out, the runway at the Knox County Regional Airport is right next to the museum. What's it like to fly something like that? It's a lot more basic than a modern airplane. It's, believe it or not, a much stronger airframe. The reason they put two wings on wasn't really to get more lift. It was to get that box structure that made like a bridge beam. This was a sport airplane in 1933, so it has maneuverability that a lot of our modern planes won't do. Smooth as butter, nice flying. A key investment for the museum, getting young people excited about science and technology. As education director, Megan Galinsky organizes classes and events for the transportation pioneers of tomorrow. How can we go into engineering and then develop new forms of airplanes, develop new forms of car? But you have to understand the history and the science of what you're doing. We teach them the fundamentals in order for them to progress into their future careers. In fact, there is so much to see and learn that the museum is looking to expand. This complex already houses multiple exhibit halls, as well as a garage and a workshop. This is a 1929 Rolls-Royce, uh, technically a Springfield Rolls-Royce. It was made in Springfield, Massachusetts, oh. under license from Rolls-Royce. How's she drive? Beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. At Owl's Head, what's old is new again, says Stinson. He hopes museum goers never look at a car or plane the same way again. 
it's more than just a car and a plane driving. The smell, the engine, and the experience is probably more of a part of the learning opportunity than the, the vehicle itself. Then you can engage in the conversation. You are just living mm -hmm. the life out Fun. there. Okay, Fun. and back to the Marshall Point Lighthouse. It's actually famous for a few things, mm -hmm. including a cameo appearance in the Oscar-winning film Forrest Gump, starring Tom Hanks. Right, it's also a spot where thousands of monarch butterflies stop on their migration south every summer. We should point out that St. George Peninsula really thrives um, with volunteers. The Owl's Head Museum pilots that we flew with, they're all volunteers. All of the planes, or most of them, are donated, as are the cars to the museum. And so without those volunteers, it doesn't work so well, but they love it. All right.